peace and blessings. Some man Patu here once again. Uh, I'm, I've been blessed with the opportunity to interview someone who has some very valuable information for us pertaining to consciousness, specifically Krishna consciousness. And I'm just going to give this brother the floor. I'm going to ask him one or two questions and just see where he goes from there, okay? First of all, brother, what's your name? Jagat Patik Das. Jagat Patik? Jagat Patik Das. Okay, okay. And how long have you been studying the uh, Krishna Consciousness teachings? About 37 years. Okay, okay. Now, um, according to the teachings of Srila Prabhupada, we're in a very particular day and time. We're in the age of Kali Yuga. Yes, that's correct. And I've been doing a little research on Kali Yuga. It's apparently the winding down of time and civilization. So can it can go back into its primordial state. But being that we're in Kali Yuga, I also heard that there's a coming golden age where the devotees of Krishna will be on the planet for 10,000 years. Have you heard of anything about that, about a golden age inside of Kali Yuga? The reason I ask is because today's date is November 19th. That puts us about a month and two days from the, the big December 21st uh, end of the Mayan calendar. Has Srila Prabhupada ever... Well, let's say in this respect. There are different facts and there are different things called theories. I can only say what I've read, what I hear from the lips of Srila Prabhupada. A lot of people got a lot of superstition. But in other words, there are things that are taking place on this planet now. Land masses, the earth rotation is going down with, and uh, land masses are being appearing. So this is, some of you might call it global warming, but it's due to the negativity or the sinful activity on this planet from the human beings. And so Mother Nature is not so favorable for so much sinful activity. It's like uh, we are rape Mother Boomy and uh, we're not giving back to this earth. <clears throat> so anything that's going on, this is the nature living in the material world. This is not the only place these things are going on, but we just know about heaven, hell, and earth. We don't know too much about heaven or too much about hell because we don't remember who was there. But this ain't home. Uh, we like fish out of the ocean. This ain't home. So the uh, Kali Yuga is the last millennia or the last age. And after that come complete or have cataclysm. Only the Supreme Lord knows when all this is going to come to take place. But right now, according to the Vedas, we've got 432,000 more years. And Kali Yuga should get more hellish than it is now. The golden age will come when this uh, Third World War come. It'll be good for preaching. Because there will be no other shelter one can take. But we were living like cavemen. And that I uh, get so hellish that uh, we may be eating other human flesh. I mean, what's the difference? We're eating human flesh now, other animals. So what's the difference between a human body and an animal body? This is the hellishness of calling you to come. Because when the Third World War come, it will block out the sun and the moon. There will be no vegetation. There will be no more animals left. So what are you going to do then? Mm. So logically, just speaking, everybody's saying, oh man, this is tripping. Yes, but the devastation is going to come. They made these bombs, they will be forced to use them. Look at what's going on in uh, Israel, in the Gaza. Because these men cannot come to a suitable conclusion for what they are doing because they're lawing it over. This is mine. It's not God, but it's mine. So they're fighting for something that don't even belong to them. They want to take their piece of pie, but they want more than what is allotted to them. Okay. So in this way, come war. You understand? Like that. But then, yes, when the golden age do integrate into uh, Car U, it'll be more peaceful. There'll be nobody to fight no more. Be just a survivor. Mm. Understand? Be kind of more of a peaceful land time. 
Because everybody will be simply trying to survive. That's it. So it'd be good for preaching. That's about all I can say on that. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Another question. Why Krishna? They got people, you know, some people believe in Jehovah. Some people believe in Buddha. What makes Krishna so special that people should be attracted to him or well, should feel, you know, anything towards I'll say, him? I'll put it in his respect. Everybody's attracted to God. And Krishna proclaimed in the Veda that he is the supreme personality of God here, prime cause of all causes. Everything is emanating from him. He got like Krishna is the chief name. God has in numerous names to befit all the entire universes. And they are knowing him in different names. See, we are not here to say this is this, this is that. But God sent his bona fide representative to this earth to retrieve the fallen souls. If you were a Buddhist, then give Buddhists what he asked for. You working in Jesus, give Jesus what he asked for. Jehovah, give Jehovah what he's asking for. All the avatars are the representative of the Supreme Lord Krishna. He sent them here for one purpose, just to retrieve the fallen soul. That choice is yours, whom you want to choose or where you want to go. Oh, we're wasting time, but at the end of the day, we all get kicked out. So the state of your consciousness at the time of death that you shall attain without fail. All the scriptures are proclaiming that. The um, Quran, Bhagavad Gita, the Holy Bible. But man have his own twist from his speculation and from his concoction to try to realize the Supreme Lord. So we all like call being disobedient. Nobody got to tell you that. You know right from wrong. But we choose to do the wrong thing. Why? Everybody's working for what? I want something from God. But yet, we want everything he possessed without God. You just can't have it. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is he's always been here. So in this way, I'm for myself personally. According to what I have read from the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and my experiences right here on this planet, I would die and go to hell because Krishna is God, period. For That's my consciousness. And um, everyone else is yes, it's just as good as Krishna because he's actually come to deliver the fallen souls. So the word is non different. You understand? So all this other mentality because everybody can get down with the same thing. Because everybody got different consciousness. And so that is where it's supposed to be, according to one's karma. That's why there's no peace on this planet. Okay. Because everybody on the bodily conception of life. So this bodily conception of life. For example, Jehovah's Witnesses, they want to live forever in a paradise earth, in a material paradise. So what's so wrong about being in a material paradise in, in this body. What if I want to remain Capri Scott forever and ever and ever? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, tell me, oh, okay. tell me the benefit of accepting a transcendental existence as opposed to a material existence. If you the difference of it is everything you know will use your intelligence. Everything in this material come stay for a little while, just like a human being being born from your mother's womb. You grow from a boy to a young man, from young man to man. You have some byproduct, some children, and you get kicked out. So anything else on the material world, come and stay for a little while, and in a certain interval, it's manifest in a certain interval, disillusion. Okay. In other words, it ends. Okay. So your spiritual body is eternal. It goes on and on in the spiritual world. Yes, the Jehovah's Witnesses can have this paradise because God is infallible. Anything. They are walking and walking. They are talking to talk. As well as they have backsliders, so the other, other religions have backsliders. But still yet, the most important is you've given Jehovah what he's asking for, following all the rules and the regulation. 